Welcome. In this video, we're going to uh, be talking about unit vector notation, uh, adding unit vectors together, uh, as well as dot products and cross products. All right, so let's get started. Our first topic is going to be unit vectors, or unit vector notation. Now, in previous videos, we've uh, figured out how to break a vector down into different components, into x components, y components, and z components. Um, but there's a different notation that we can use and that helps us um, with some problem solving later on. Um, so for our x direction, we're going to use a uh, script i. For the y direction, we're going to use a script j. And for the z direction, we're going to use a script k. There's a little hat on top of each of those. Now these mean uh, these i, j's, and k's are going to bear unit vector notation, um, and that basically is just saying that a value um, is going to be in the i direction or in the x direction, in the j direction, which is the y direction, or in the k direction, which is in the z direction. Um, so to write this, we, do, we would have um, our vector a oops, um, is going to be the component in the x direction just times the unit vector i. Uh, and the unit vector i is equal to 1, so it doesn't change the magnitude, it just tells us the direction. So for the rest of them, it's going to be the a component, or excuse me, the y component of a in the j direction plus the z component of a in the k direction. Now we had another vector vector b, it would be b in the x direction, b in the y direction, and, oops, and b in the z direction, times k. Okay, um, just a reminder what these directions we're talking about. If we draw our coordinate axis like so, where x is going to be to the right, I uh, will you say y is kind of coming towards us, coming towards us out of the page, and then going up is going to be our z direction. All right, so what if we had to add um, a and b together? So we can say some vector c is going to be the addition of vector a plus vector b. If we wanted to do that in unit vector notation, all we would do is add each of the co components together. So for instance, our c vector is going to be ax plus bx, which is the two x components, and that's going to be in the i direction, plus our y components added together, that's going to be in the j direction, plus our z components added together in the k direction. Notice how I put um, parentheses on either side of those just so I know that everything inside that parentheses is in the direction um, of the unit vector. All right. So we can also multiply vectors, and there's different ways of multiplying vectors. Now, if we just had a scalar uh, and we were going to multiply a scalar by a vector, we wouldn't change the direction of the vector at all. All we, we would do is uh, change the magnitude. So as you can see, if we have our vector a, and we multiply it by just some scalar s, it's just going to be s times the vector a. Um, so what this would look like in our unit vector notation would be s times ax i direction plus a y in the k or the j direction plus a z in the k direction. And you could just multiply that through so you would have s a x in the i direction plus s a y j hat oops plus s a z k hat. All right. Now another way to multiply vectors is by the scalar dot product. Uh, we call it the scalar dot product because it's going to result in a scalar. All right, so dot product kind of looks like this. You have some vector a, you dot it with vector b, and that's going to equal the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So over here you can see that we have our, angle, uh, our vector a 
and our vector b, and the angle between them is phi, or theta, and the resultant is going to be a scalar. So this result here doesn't have a direction, it's just a scalar value. All right, now there's, if we want to use unit vector notation for our dot product, we have a dot b. And again, that could equal the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. Um, but if I wanted to use unit vector notation, all you would do uh, is multiply the vectors together. So just kind of like we added them together. So the result is going to be AX, BX, plus AY, BY, plus AZ times uh, BZ. All right, well, so why do we only get these terms? Because if you think about it, um, when you multiply two of the two vectors together, you have a, uh, x, oops, excuse me, AX plus AY plus AZ, you're multiplying it by bx plus by plus bz okay and you want to distribute through so you have ax and bx which we have up there uh, but what would happen if we would do the cross or the dot product of ax and by so we have ax and by well let's look at our graph again So if this is x, this is y, and this is z, oops, they're all at 90 degree angles to each other. So there's a 90 degree angle there, this is a 90 degree angle here, and then this is also, oops, this is also a 90 degree angle here. Well, if you look in the x direction and the y direction, it's a 90 degree angle, the cosine of 90 is going to be zero. Uh, so any term that's going to be in the x direction times the y direction, you're going to get a zero. Now also the same thing goes with the z direction. So a and z direction, if you look in the x, excuse me, the x in the z direction. So if you look in the x direction, z direction, you have this 90 degree angle. Cosine between them, um, cosine of 90 is going to be zero as well. So all of those, those terms are going to go away. And same goes for the rest of them. So all you're going to be left with is the, t are the terms multiplied with each other that are the same. So you have ax, bx is going to stay the same because uh, the angle between anything in the x direction is going to be zero. They're both in the x direction. Cosine of zero is one. So we got to keep that term. Okay. So this is our result for the scalar dot product. And again, um, this is a scalar on the right side. Notice how I didn't put in any i's, j's, or k's because our answer is going to be a scalar. So you add all these together and you'll get a number. All right, moving on. The other kind of uh, multiplying vectors is called a cross product. All right, so that's going to be denoted like this. So you have a cross b with a big X. Now the result is some new vector. So instead of getting a scalar, uh, we're getting a vector this time. All right, so a little bit different are just the magnitude of that vector is going to be a b sine of phi or theta um, instead of cosine. All right, so slight difference. Now, if we wanted to know the direction of that vector c, um, all we would do is, if you look over here, take your hand and put it in the direction of whatever the first vector is. So in this case, our first vector is a. And then you want to curl your fingers towards the second vector. All right, so curling your fingers towards the second vector, uh, you're going to end up with um, your thumb pointing in a specific direction. So if you use your right hand, and that's why it's called the right hand rule, we've got to use your right hand. Um, it's going to show you that the direction of our C vector is actually going to be coming out of the table or going up. So notice how the C vector here is in this upward direction. All right. Now, similarly to the dot product, you can multiply all the terms out. And what you're left with is this. And again, since it's a vector, now we have the components. So we have something in the i direction, something in the j direction, something in the, in the k direction. Uh, so where did all of this come from? Well, 
if you think about it, we can't use um, we can't use the terms that are the same. So x and x, uh, the angle between those are is going to be zero again, and the sine of zero is zero. So all of those terms are going to go away. A y times b y will go away. A z times b z will go away. But all the other terms you'll be able to keep because the angle between those would be ninety degrees. Sine of ninety is one. Uh, so notice how we keep all the other terms. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut um, which your book doesn't give you, um, but it's an easy way uh, of being able to do the cross product. It's called a determinant, uh, and don't get too scared. Um, it's it's actually pretty simple. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do uh, is write our i, j, and k across the top. Then we're going to start with our, the first vector of the cross product. Uh, in that case, this is a. So we're going to write the components across right under the i, j, and k. All right, so we have a x, which is the x component. Oops. A y and a z for the z component. Uh, right below that, we draw the next vector, which is b in component form. So that's going to be bx, by, and b z. Okay. Then we put the lines around it. That tells us that we're going to be doing the determinant. Okay. All right, and then this is how we solve it. So let me change colors here. All right, so you first start by crossing out the row that has i in it, so the row and the column. What you're left with is you take this, multiply it together, and you subtract these two multiplied together. So that would be ay times bz minus az oops, times by. This whole thing is going to be in the i direction. All right. Now the second term we're going to subtract. So you do a minus sign, parentheses, do the same thing with j. So let's use a different color. Cross out everything in the row and column of j, and then everything that's left we want to multiply together. So a x times bz minus az times bx. So that would be ax bz minus az bx. Okay, and that's going to be in our j direction. All right, last thing that we want to do, we're getting a little messy here, but we'll go ahead and switch colors again. We're going to cross out everything in the last column and row for the k. Okay, and then everything that's left, multiply together and then subtract from each other. So that's going to be ax times by minus ay times bx. And that's going to be in our z direction. All right, a little complicated, um, but we're going to do an example in a second, and you'll be able to kind of see why. All right. First, let's go ahead and do an example with the simpler form. Um, all right, so if vector A, which is shown right here, lies in the xy plane, has a magnitude of 18 units, and points in the direction of 250 degrees from the positive x direction. So if the positive x is in this direction, 250 degrees all the way around is the direction of A. Um, so there's vector B as well. It has a magnitude of 12 units and it points in the positive Z direction. So positive Z is coming right uh, up straight like that. What is A cross B? Well, um, so we have two vectors in the uh, <coughs> magnitude angle notation. So we know what the magnitude is and the angle is. Uh, and we can find uh, the magnitude of the cross product and the direction of the cross product with the right hand rule. All right, so let's go and use the equation um, to find the magnitude first. So we're just going to do a times b sine of phi or sine of theta. So you have 18 times 12 times the sine of 90. Sine of 90 is 1, uh, so that's just going to be 216. All right, so that's the magnitude. Now for the um, for the angle, we need to use the right hand rule. So 
if you, to get a general sense of the direction, if we put our hand in the direction of A, so our hand is going to kind of be like this in the direction of A, and we want to curl our hand up in this direction towards B. When we do that, we see that the direction of C is going to be in this direction. Now, what is that direction? Well, we know it's 90 degrees from both of those angles. Um, so 90 degrees from A, if you take this 90 degree angle right here, we can basically see um, that it's 250 minus 90. So 250 minus 90 they give you here, it's going to be 160 degrees. All right, so the final answer um, is C is equal to 216 at an angle of 160 degrees. Okay. Let's do another example. Um, so what if we were given the vectors in unit vector notation? Well, what we can do, do is use the determinant to find the cross product. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so our a vector is given here, our b vector is given there. I'm just going to put it into the form that I showed you earlier. So we're going to set it up with i, j, and k. Below that, we're going to put in our a vector. So we have 3 in the i direction, negative 4 in the j direction, and then 0 in the k direction. For our b vector, we have negative 2 in the i direction, nothing in the k direction, so that's just going to be 0, and then 3 in the k direction, so that would be 3. This is going to be our determinant. Oops. We can go ahead and write this out. Um, so again, we're going to use my colors here. We're going to cross out the first column and row and everything that's left we can use. So we have negative 4 times 3 minus 0 times 0. And that's going to be in the i direction. Minus, don't forget that minus for the j. Our second one is going to be, if we cross this out, we have 3 times 3 left. So 3 times 3, that's that 3 and that 3. Minus, this is just going to be 0 because we have 0 times negative 2. So that's going to be a 0. And that will be in our j direction. Plus, go ahead and change colors again. We're going to cross out the last row. What do we have left? 3 times 0. So that's just going to be 0. Minus negative 4 times negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 2. Okay. Oops. And this is all going to be in our k direction. So let's go ahead and add this all together. So looking just at our first term, you end up with a negative 12 in the i direction, minus 9 in the j direction. We have a minus negative and negative. Three negatives ends up being negative, so you get a minus 8 in the k direction. All right, so our vector c is equal to all of that. All right, that's it for the chapter.